While parts of remediation can be automated and enhanced with third-party integrations like ServiceNow, it's safe to assume that the responsibility for this effort will be assumed primarily by the ops team. And so it should come as no surprise that atomic automation includes solid capabilities to help these teams perform their duties. Access to development object is often restricted and operators cannot use them. Yet they're tasked with untangling these situations that we've described throughout this course. And so our job as designers is to make sure that that job is as streamlined as possible. For this, we have operator support tools. We'll focus primarily on the homepage dashboards. We also need to design one-click environments for operators to trigger any sort of remediation process when it's needed. For this, we'll make extensive use of the user catalog, which can serve as a one-stop shop to access core processes and operations. Finally, keep in mind that Atomic Automation can be enhanced with other Broadcom products for better support. Among them, we find Broadcom's Automation Analytics and Intelligence, which integrates natively with Atomic and provides far better analytical tools, especially in the field of service level agreements. Up to this point, we've been working with design functions in the process assembly perspective. Let's now take a look at some of the UI features, including Atomic Automation, to support operations. For this, we head to the home page. In dashboards, which can either be public or personal, we've created a simple dashboard for operations. It has four widgets showing the proportion of generic successes and failures as a pie chart and percentages, a table focused more specifically on our core job, the file transfer, with start and end times and status, and finally the My Catalog widget, to which we've added the two core objects in our process, the file transfer and the archive removal job. Administrators can create as many dashboards as they need with any number of widgets. We've added another column. We can now add another widget. Widgets can show three types of information data from analytics, charts, tables, grid, and so forth. This is what we have in our two top widgets. The General tab includes HTML page, text, and YouTube URLs. For example, if you wanted your more junior operators to access some of our training pages. The Process Automation tab includes interfaces specific to ops, activities which will show live events, historical data, process monitoring, and so forth. We use two of these for our bottom widgets. In the Data Source page, you're able to define, broaden, or narrow the perimeter of the data set source for our dashboards. In the Data Source, we focused on file transfers, since this is the core object. Doing so means we'll disregard other, less relevant processes in favor of this one. We can also narrow the time frame, say if you wanted to focus on operational data for the weekend. The user catalog is effective in narrowing the scope of action of an operator and restricting it to a few objects. In our case, we have two core objects, the file transfer and the archive cleaning job. Using the catalog, the operator can trigger the execution of one of those objects without having access to the process assembly perspective. Not only is this far more convenient, it's also more secure. The catalog also enables standard feature functions for the objects like reports and monitoring.
To enable the user catalog, administrators have to define a user group, say operators, in which they will add the members of the ops team. These can be internal, Active Directory, Okta, and so forth. We've defined a user group and the name is reflected in the user catalog in the dashboard. You simply add the users here and the catalog will be available to them when they log into AWI. We can add our use case workflow to the catalog. You're able to build remediation dashboards that show the details and successes for individual remediations, summaries, and more. You can see the frequency of trigger of a specific remediation, the success rate, time of trigger, and times at which the issue arises most often. Although it's out of scope, Automation Analytics and Intelligence represents an excellent third-party platform to deploy alongside Atomic Automation. It's a Broadcom product, and so obviously the two products integrate seamlessly. We know how to design and execute on remediation needs. We can also collect key performance measurements like service level agreements to see how our processes are faring over time.